What is the range of your resurrection interest? Is it just apologetics? Well, if you're talking about the resurrection particularly, I try to catch myself when I'm doing this, and I try to say, I need to move the whole range. Now, by range, when you say resurrection, people are usually talking about either apologetics, evidences for, or salvation. They're talking about what definition of the gospel is, what you have to do to say, I do to Jesus, and so on. Uh, I think the whole range is important. I primarily do apologetics for reasons I can explain later, but I primarily do apologetics because of the heavy need in that area. But I would like to study the resurrection, and the big magnum opus I'm, I'm working on goes the whole range. So we move from history and evidences to answering critics. Of course, that's all apologetics. But I also have done things, I've published and spoken on how is the resurrection the center of theology and and then how is the resurrection the center of practice. So let's say theology. You could say uh, the resurrection is uh, the key to the gospel. It's the heart of the gospel. You know, Romans 10, 9, if, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God's raised him from the dead, you're saved. So it's the heart of the gospel. But it's also really practical in the New Testament. For example, in First Peter chapter 1, Peter says, I know you all are going through persecution right now, but take heart. Jesus has been raised from the dead, and the resurrection has secured heaven for you, and heaven can't be taken away from you. And if I remember correctly, he uses four Greek terms, which mean... Things like, it can't be stolen, it can't deteriorate, uh, and one of the words is, your resurrection hope is guarded for you in heaven. Now, you might be thinking, wow, you mean like, resurrection is guarded by the armies of heaven? I, I think that's kind of the idea. It's safekeeping. You know, your, your valuables are safe with the Lord, that kind of thing. But the amazing thing there is Peter starts by saying, you're going through persecution right now. But that's okay. The resurrection happened, and you have eternal life. And you go, uh, Peter, did you miss it here? Uh, they're talking about persecution. They're talking about their family being in danger. Maybe their children being in danger. And you're saying, remember the resurrection? But then you remember, yeah, but this is Peter talking. Peter knows what persecution is. Um, and he thinks the resurrection is relevant to what I'm going through. So that would be a really good example of taking resurrection through life situations. Or how about doubt? What's the resurrection say to listeners who may be struggling with doubt? Or here's another one. How about this creative application? What does the resurrection say to the coronavirus? You know, what does the resurrection say to people who are alone in their homes for weeks? Resurrection's got to talk about that. So I'm interested in the whole range, the event itself, how it links theology. Jesus told the skeptics, I won't give you any sign but the prophet of the prophet uh, Jonah. So the resurrection indicated who he was. That's good theology. And persecution, doubt, and quarantining are all subjects that I think the resurrection is relevant to in a very practical sense.